Welcome back to Missouri Cricket Barn Homestead. This is Debbie, and we are out in the garden right now getting ready to plant the fall crops. Actually, you've already planted them. Surprise, surprise. So we are doing fall carrots, and we're going to go ahead and plant some cilantro, which we've already done. And we have refreshed some of the rows that we had that maybe had a little bit missing or whatever happened, but uh, we've replaced that. We've got some new beets in the ground. We've got some more Swiss chard. I'm actually going with a different type called apple blossom Swiss chard that is only supposed to be for the greens and it's more like a baby green style. So we've planted a bunch of those. And again, all kinds of carrots. We've got um, Nantes Supreme and Ford Hook Farms um, Red Cord Chantonet. And we have some ox hearts that we had go into the ground as well. So we've done an entire row of that. And again, these are 32 foot rows. My garden is 32 by 80. And it expands a little bit all the time because I come in and I till it up a little bit. We've still been working on getting the soil nice and loose and soft. We've had some areas in the garden that have clay in it. Um, but it is pretty easy to work with once you get it um, tilled up. We went ahead and harvested our potatoes. We ended up with a box full of potatoes, so it was more than what we had planted. Not quite as good as I had hoped that it would be, but again, this is the first gardening season for this property. So it's going to take a little bit to get it all acclimated and get it um, working well. Uh, so we had a pretty good harvest some nice big potatoes but only a box full we planted three rows in here which is what we harvested and then we've got a couple more rows left in our extended portion of the garden but they are not doing so well because they are under some trees so we won't be trying those again you can see those there they just are not doing well because they're getting hit by the all of the weather that comes in, but yet not getting enough rain because of the trees that are over and not enough sun. And then we've got animals getting in there because it's not uh, fenced in on this portion. So we're going to go ahead and get this fenced in and then we will work on this port part of the ground and we'll probably put lettuces and things like that over in this section. We've got a couple of squash in here that are actually doing pretty well. I found that squash actually likes a little bit of shade. And we've actually been without significant water now as far as rain for about a month and a half. Um, we've had a couple of rains, but they've been pretty small. And then we're going a long period between without rain. Um, so it's been a little bit hard, a little bit dry, but we're still working with it. We're supposed to get a full week of rain coming up beginning Tuesday. And today is Friday. And it is the 9th of August. So we are still planting, even though it's into August. Um, we will still have a growing season here until late October, early November. So we still have plenty of time to get some crops in. Um, we also planted some more straight neck squash, uh, yellow straight neck squash, summer squash. And we've also planted some dark green zucchini. So we have those going on. Actually, we planted uh, Black Beauty zucchini. It's dark green, to be honest. And we've also planted some leeks. We've got American flag leeks and then King Richard leeks. And um, hopefully those will come up and we'll get those thinned out. We've got about a half a row, 16 feet of leeks in here. So hopefully we'll have a lot of nice leeks that'll come on. And we've also planted some lettuce leaf basil. And we planted some more bush beans. So we have contender, provider, and top crop bush beans that we planted a full row of, 32 feet row. And um, let's see, we have planted a few other things in here. I think we've planted a few more collards um, just to get some baby collards and things like that to get going because we've had the, everything that we planted has done so amazing. We've got collards and we have kale and all kinds of things we're actually going to have to consider replanting the kale because we have just used so much kale um, we have a bearded dragon who eats kale as well as um, pigs and things like that that eat some of the kale as well our rutabagas are doing just amazing look how huge those leaves are and they have nice 
big bulbs on them right now. And you can see our row of older carrots here. They have done amazing. Um, we have some smaller carrots in the back that are coming on. Um, there was various stages of, of planting in these, carrot, in, this, in these carrots. So we've got um, quite a few carrots to come up. Um, and well, we've had them come up, but they just have to get um, more mature. And then this is our first row of cabbage. We've had a little trouble out of this row of cabbage, I guess because I planted it more of a standalone. And we've had rabbits get into the garden and things like that. And now we have an issue with a groundhog. And this row just gets, it is the first one that just gets um, annihilated by everything. But it is putting on cabbages now. It's taken a while just because it keeps getting chewed on and then it has to keep coming back out. And But we still got cabbage heads coming on. We have a few that are actually getting pretty large at this point. So they are producing. It's just taken them a long time because they kept getting hit with just everything chewing on them. I'm not sure this one is going to do anything because it got completely chewed down. There was no leaves left on it and it had to come back out and I was surprised it actually did come back out and the head on it looks a little funky so I'm not sure if it'll produce really well but we do have some heads that are started on these. This one got um, all the way down to no leaves as well so it had to come back out and this one you can tell is still recovering and it got hit with no leaves as well and that was by the rabbit. And then this one had some pretty bad pest damage and we've been working with it, but I think that I may end up having to take that one out. And then we've got one here that is shaded by this bigger one, which you can see is heading up. And then we've got a pretty nice head on this one. And then we've got a head started on this one. But you can tell they've just been chewed and chewed and chewed by everything. So they have had to recover multiple times and that puts you behind a little bit. But we do have other cabbage in different rows. So we do have cabbage in other areas that have much larger heads on them because they have not been hit as hard by everything coming and going. I can actually show you those since I'm already in the garden. So you can see that one is getting a nice large head on it. This one actually got chewed down, but is recovering. And it's a, I think it's called a savory perfection or basically a Savoy cabbage. And it was recovering. And then this one is getting a head on it as well. You can see we're getting some nice cauliflower now. That nice large head. So we're having some recovering in some of the cabbages, but some of them are doing really well. This one's getting a nice head on it, as well as this one. And this one, even though it has a lot of holes, is producing quite a nice head on it, as well as this one. So just recovery mode, and uh, sometimes that happens, especially with a new area that we're not sure of. We have had to replant Tuscan kale or Lacinato kale repeatedly and um, still still the rabbit hits those the first thing. It's a very small little rabbit so it's very hard to catch it in the garden. The dogs have been after it that I have and um, they're toy poodles so the rabbit itself even though it's a baby is still almost the size of my toy poodles. So they're not quite up to the, the task of actually catching it, but they do run it out of the garden repeatedly. Eventually we will get that rabbit because we've gotten most of them. But uh, you can tell our celery doing pretty amazing. I'm having um, the stalks actually spreading out right now instead of standing up. So I may have to come in and actually tie these up, which will get you that more of a store-bought looking celery and maybe even wrap them so that gives you the um, more pale consistency to the stalks. And then you can see our sweet potatoes are blooming like crazy. They are just blooming all over the place in beautiful 
running everywhere at this point just looking gorgeous and I actually have more sweet potatoes that I could go ahead and plant and see if they could actually do anything before the end of the season happens so we might check that out see if we um, can get anything on those but everything is getting towards the end of the season for the things that we planted in the spring or basically the first week of June and we have corn right now that is tasseling producing some of it is even ready I've already checked some of the um, ears and some of them are ready to harvest already and then we have already harvested beans we've got more to harvest in here I just picked beans two days ago I have more beans to pick already so everything is just looking beautiful and I wanted to show you the um, popcorn that we planted we mentioned in some previous videos that it was so huge and had not tasseled or produced yet but it has finally so we have popcorn as you can see that is over eight feet tall probably nine or ten feet tall at this point and each stalk is producing two to three ears on it of popcorn and it is some beautiful silks they're nice and red Now this is a mixture of white popcorn and red popcorn. So I'm assuming the silks being red probably is the red and then there are some white ones in there. But just beautiful popcorn. And pretty soon we'll just let those dry on the stalks and then we will harvest that popcorn. And then we've got cucumbers and other squash that are planted here at the base that were planted later. Those are beginning to run and also bloom. Looks like we got some cucumbers popping up on there. And we need to get in here and pull these early straight neck and zucchini out because they are so done. They have produced like crazy. We have harvested so much. And you can see some of our red curry squash in there as well. Those are nearly ready to harvest. You can tell the vines are just beat up because they have done so much. And we have big pumpkins that are hanging everywhere. And again, we only planted like in the first and second week of June. And we have so much in there that is producing like crazy. And we have some really nice big pumpkins in there that are the Boston Marrow Pumpkins. And then we have loads of red curry squash as well. And you can see this is the Boston Marrow here. And they actually start looking like a yellow straight neck squash when they first come up, but then they get really huge. And then they turn a nice peachy orange color. Sometimes they get really bright colored, but just an amazing amount of beans and corn and all kinds of things going on in there. Our ears of corn are in varying sizes. Some of them are not too huge, and then some of them are pretty good sized. It just depends. But we tried to maximize the space with planting beans and everything around the corn, and sometimes that can, um, well, just cause the ears not to get quite as large but we'll have plenty to eat on through the winter and then we'll have lots of popcorn that is for sure and then we have started harvesting tomatoes as well we've had tomatoes start turning and we have gobs and gobs of tomatoes in here really nice big tomatoes you can see some of them in here I think And it seems like on the daily now we have several tomatoes that I have to come and pick because they are ready. And if they stay any longer, then they sometimes get pecked on by different birds or something like that. And we've had lots of cherry tomatoes. You can see our cherry tomatoes are just hanging full. 
We've got a pineapple tomato that we had harvested earlier today, and I'm looking forward to trying that. We've had loads of peppers that we've harvested, mostly are hot peppers, but we do have some bell peppers that have started producing now, thankfully, because I had worried that we wouldn't have any, but these vines, these pepper vines, have just had it rough. So they are still trying to recover, and we have a lot of them that are producing, but it could have been better year for peppers than what it, what had happened. But we're doing well, and we've got spaghetti squash that is now starting to set on the vines. So you can see one of those down in there. And again, these were vines that were just planted at the beginning of the rows. Doing pretty amazing. And then we've had okra that we have harvested every couple of days, and they are still producing and getting larger. You can see how big these okra are now. And then we have several watermelons all throughout the rows out there. And we have, again, a groundhog that is getting into the garden and is just basically trampling all the vines. So I'm not really sure what to do about that. I mean, we just have to catch the, the groundhog in here and He's pretty, pretty gnarly. He gets away pretty quickly. But we have loads of watermelons out there. Haven't seen any cantaloupes yet. I'm not sure we'll get any this season. It may have been too late when we planted because cantaloupes take quite a long time. But we will have plenty of everything else. And I've been canning. I've canned plum butter and plum sauce and... Um, we've got pickles in the works and all kinds of things in here. And we have red curry squash just everywhere hanging in here, even throughout the corn. But loads and loads of good stuff all throughout the garden. But I just wanted to show everybody the fall planting that we have going on. I've got cabbages and um, all kinds of things are ready to plant into the garden. And still so much more going on. So like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for notices on new videos as they come out. And we will see you in the next one.